Okay, this is a shaker style table that I produced. As you can see, it has um, three boards that have been laminated or glued together. Um, and then it features a chamfer on the edge, which makes it a little bit thinner. Um, and then you have these long, slender legs. And so there is a taper cut on the inside here and then on the inside here going down. So this is, I believe, 5 eighths of an inch down here and an inch and an eighth on top. Um, I made this knob uh, on the lathe, and so just kind of came up with a pattern, try to duplicate it as best as I could for this and a second table uh, that are a match set. But what I did was I was able to use a modern um, I think that's an 832nd screw by adding a, there's a little brass uh, insert in the knob so that that screw will, um, that the screw inside here that you see right there, it's a regular machine thread screw and it will thread in here. And so if somebody wanted to just unscrew this, and switch it to brass or black or white or whatever they like, they could do that. Um, other than that, it's a very simple design. It's a square top, 18 inch by 18 inch. And so um, this is finished with, um, I believe I actually just used um, Watco's Danish oil. And then I did do a coat of armor seal for a little extra toughness from general finishes. Uh, and so what I really like is the way that the grain in the ash pipe uh, pops. And so you really get a good look at some of that grain action when you get a nice oil finished soaking into the wood. So um, I call it kind of a rustic modern. It has a lot of natural texture there, but it does have the long legs. It is a classic design um, from the turn of the century, around 1900 probably. Um, but I really like it. Um, I've had a lot of looks, and it's small enough that I could ship it, but I haven't chosen to do so. Um, if I was doing a single table, I would probably try to sell it that way. But I do have this and its match, where the grain actually flows from one drawer front to the other, because I used a single board and I cut this piece, and then the other half of the board went to its uh, the matching table. So anyways, I just wanted to kind of do an overview. Um, one thing I'm proud of, I used uh, Baltic birch. I did the standard, I kind of opened up the back, so if there's any stains or damage, the drawer can easily be um, fixed. I did do some chamfering on the edges of the plywood. So that means that I, I made it a little bit thinner on the edge to get it to fit, but that's easy. You could do that with sandpaper. Um, and I do like plywood for that, even though it's a very classic design. Um, I wanted it to be more serviceable. I've seen too many really nice dressers that are ruined when they have a giant ink stain or makeup stain or you know, hair coloring or something. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to point out was the hand cut dovetails. And so they're not perfect, but um, for, a, for my first set of tables, I was pretty happy with them. So as you can see, they are, I believe half blind is what they call these. And so it's a solid piece of wood in the front where you cut these um, bird butt or dovetail shaped um, uh, make these cuts, create this shape here, and so it fits into these, what they call pins, or I call them triangle thingies. So the triangles keep this from pulling out this way, and then you just kind of get it in there tight with a little bit of glue. And that will be together, that will hold together for hundreds of years if you take care of this. So um, one note is the, the stops here, um, I actually had to a little bit of wood on the back because I was I, I got ahead of myself I finished this rail and I was nervous about the glue actually holding these stops in place so I glued it onto the back of this rail um, that um, 
uh, that wasn't finished um, because you when you put the finish on there you seal the pores nothing sticks to it so it's a water-based glue and by putting the finish on here um, uh, I kept um, I, I basically I probably made it impossible for the glue to stick um, but on the back side of the rail um, there's a board coming up I can show you. So I have those blocks that I added for a little bit of reinforcement. Um, the other thing is that there's a little bit of filler here, a little bit of filler there. That keeps the drawer from getting stuck. It helps guide it as it travels in and out. And then I have a rail for it to travel. And then this is called a kicker up here. Um, that keeps the drawer from tilting out. So it tracks in nicely and then I actually made the blocks that are holding this together because I needed to use it's not a very thick top and so I needed to make some extra little blocks with the fingers that you see um, hold this in here so you can get a good look but they uh, attach to the top with a screw and there's a little finger that just goes in that uh, that mortise or that hole in the back and uh, on the sides and so there's plenty of plenty of slot there for it to travel back and forth with uh, moisture changes so that's pretty much the table it's a nice simple design oh I forgot to mention there's two teeth that I cut and they plug into the side of the rail um, and so using any other kind of fastener would be a little tricky because it's such a skinny leg this way and so there's um, I just cut up they're about quarter inch size teeth <laughs> that plug into a couple of holes in the leg um, and then on the top for this guy um, that's a strip of wood running this way with a dovetail in the rail itself and then that fits into a dovetail in the top of the leg here and so you can make a pretty ugly dovetail but because the top covers it up it doesn't have to be perfect to be functional it just has to be snug to keep the legs from tipping over and the table from falling apart so i'm pretty happy with them um, somebody's gonna probably come out of the woodwork at some point and decide they want this and its partner so if you're interested in um, making this yourself there's a lot of great lessons about just gluing wood together and how, uh, how to make the drawers work and so on. And uh, if you want to know more, just like and subscribe if you want. And uh, otherwise, I will be posting more videos about how to produce this with some hopefully improved audio quality with the uh, microphones I just picked up. So um, I hope that all came through, and I hope you liked the video. And stick around if you want some tips on how to build your own furniture. Okay, so this is a table I built. Um, I'm making a video kind of just going around and showing what it is and how it is. And it's a shaker style uh, end table with a drawer, modified modern drawer where there's actually a fastener so you can take the knob on and off. But what I wanted to say about this table is, is just not how it's put together, but the fact that if you work on a lot of used furniture, you do get to the point where you wonder, would it be easier just to build your own furniture? And so I decided to kind of take that question and uh, try building my own furniture. So this is the result. I have this guy. This is actually the girl. Um, I have a matching piece, but it has a uh, walnut dovetail in the top. Um, and so I, I feel like, I, I think if you've got a furniture flipping business and it's going well, you can... You can look at the tools that you have and you can decide if you want to make these legs. Um, it helps to have a table saw, but there's other ways to do it. If you have more time than money, um, you can pretty much make all this happen with very inexpensive tools um, with a little bit of practice and know-how, a little bit of ingenuity as well. So, uh, yeah, if you'd like to hear more about how this is going, it's definitely... There's a lot of upside to flipping a, uh, a couple pieces of wood than there is to uh, trying to bring a, a really junky piece of furniture back to life sometimes. Okay, so here's a quick look at my matching um, 
I call it the male partner for the table. This grain on the drawer here with the hand cut dovetails, um, that flows into the other table's uh, drawer front. Um, the other thing that really, um, this is why I call it the male, it's got this big scuff in the face here with a, uh, it had a knot here, I didn't like it, and I decided to just put in a black walnut bow tie. Um, I like it, I don't know if other people like it, but um, that's what I went with. And so, yeah, at some point, um, if you want to see a video about how to do this, there's some good ones on the internet, but yeah, it was relatively easy to do. Um, and so, depending on the tools that you have, there's better and worse ways to do it. So, anyways, that was one way to kind of create the same with the tables, but something a little different.